because you're on your... Oh, thanks. Pretty classy. Yeah, super classy. <laughs> Did you pee in it or is it just water? Is yes. Very hydrated. Got the toilet bowl mug from the US Arc auction. Yeah. Sorry, Brian. We'll do better next time. Our budget cuts, budget's not very high. So we're having to make budget you with a separate <laughs> shoestring. I get it. I could tell that's your, that must be your financials on the back of chalkboard there. That's him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Oh man, I'm I'm a little tired, dude. I'm still in recovery mode, honestly, which I'm sure you are as well. I mean, and you hear my voice is like, "Hey, what's up? I just dude. got back from Pomona." Yeah, that's how I sounded last night. It's my, I've recovered a little bit since then, but last night on live stream, I I was heard heard myself talking, and I was just like, "Who is that talking?" <laughs> that's funny, dude. So can I tell you how my Pomona story starts and? And up until the point, can I tell you what happened up to the point you saw me? Okay, sure. All right. Because I noticed that before I even picked up a camera, you guys had a Pomona Reptile Super Show video uploaded on You're welcome. YouTube. <laughs> that you was like good. that? That was I did very like off-brand. I, I, I did <laughs> like it. I thought it was clean. I liked the, how the quietness of the, like the walking through the big tunnel. It looked really good in the background. I thought that it was... Uh... The only thing I missed is that I remember you guys filmed some part about this is the heart of the Reptile Super Show. For some reason, that part didn't make the cut. I don't know why. I'm going to go ahead and blame... To the editor on that one. Blame Thomas. But I was like, all right, I'll, you know, at least we... We got some something in there, <laughs> but okay. So Thursday morning, Thursday morning, I'm, I'm set. I'm going to Bible study 6 AM and I have to leave a little early. Cause I got to go take a COVID test. Cause you had to have a test or, you know, you had to show negative test or whatever at the front door of the show. Right. Um, and so I went to take my test Thursday morning and then I leave the place. I go to the gym and I go in there and I'm like thinking I have to go take the kids to school. And it's like, Oh wait, they're not going to school today. Um, and so I hit it pretty hard. I do lots of like heavy weight, low rep, just like push it and, you know, put get in that, probably an hour and a half of weightlifting. Then I go swim a mile and then I go jump in the sauna for about 25 minutes, then go in a cold shower, walk back home. Um, it was not walk back home, sorry, drive. And then, uh, you know, get things prepared for the next day because I'm going to be, you know, taking all my stuff, going to grab a rental car the following morning and getting all that stuff going together. And uh, oh, that night I go out and have a little whiskey tasting with some of the guys from uh, another church group that I've been going to down in uh, Garden Farms. Super That's a cool fun guy. church. Yeah, super fun, fun, super fun group. Just did like a blind tasting. I brought like four or five different things and it was good. Um, so I wake up the next morning after all that and I just kind of turn over in bed and it's like, oh, just like feel like my head move after it moved. You know, you know, you like turn your head over and like, everything kind of follows it after <laughs> yeah and right I was, like, I was like yeah it was like oh <laughs> I was like i don't know if that's good it's like uh and then i find out that the test i took the day before like it's not going to be ready for maybe like three to five days i'm like well how am i supposed to like that's not going to work i have to leave like you know now to go to the show and so i go to get the rental car I come back to start unloading all the stuff and I call my uncle on the way back to see if he has a test because I know he's usually got tests on hand so I can get one that's done and that I can actually bring with me to the show. Sure. And so I go, he's like, yep, I got one. I'll leave it outside. I went pick it up from him. I, I come back to the house. I get the swab out. I do the thing. And then I come down, I start packing up thinking it's going to be negative. It's going to be negative. So I'm, I'm going to go downstairs, pack while this thing sit up there and wait for my timer to go off. And some crazy miraculous, I, I stuffed this freaking, uh, rental SUV full of all the stuff I need at the exact time of the timer that goes off. I finish packing the last thing, run upstairs, check out the test. Sure enough, negative. So I'm like, great, great. I'm not, you know, I'm feeling a little like, like it's got a little, little, little hitch in my step, but, um, but negative test. I was like, sweet. Say bye to the family, grab the test, wrap it up and put elastic bag, put it on pocket, start driving down to the show on the way down. I'm like, sitting there in the car just feeling like feeling this this weight this end of this this physical it's weight setting in. set in on me it's just like <sighs> like coming melting down my face like the whole three and a half hour drive i'm just like slowly sinking a little lower it's like oh god 
like rolling the rolling the window down on 405 like it's fresh air <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez and then i i finally roll in and and i'm like all right i'm here i got to like get set up my parents are at the show i tell them look i got a negative test but i'm i'm feeling sick and like i told you like like everybody i saw set up i was like i had my mask i like dude i'm sick okay i'm, I'm right, just, yeah. just know that i'm sick i got a negative test but i'm sick um and so, you know, some of you guys didn't care. You're like, come here, big guy, give me a hug, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. But I, I, uh, yeah, so I, that all happened as, as you know, as our audience might know, we were supposed to record this podcast that Friday night at setup. Yeah. So you we, look like crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I think you, you didn't even question me. I didn't just look like I felt like crap. I was like, there's no way. Like at five no, o'clock, I, I was like, yeah, I'm going I back. Tell. You were just, I, I've been there before where you're just like, I'm here. I mean, it's a huge effort just to get out to the show. Everybody knows that. But you were like, I'm here and I'm alive. And that's all I have to give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after I left you guys there that Friday night, I went back to the room and basically every 45 minutes, I told you this, but every 45 minutes I was up peeing and then shivering uncontrollably back to the bed. And I did that throughout the entirety of Friday night with a couple of like hot steam over with the face and the towel in the sink um every sporadically in between those those 45 minute break of shivering peeing shivering peeing but then come saturday morning like when the sun came up i was like you know what the fever's fine again fever's gone like i seem like i think i'm good to go like i was feeling a little residual because i mean it was pretty intense <laughs> like i was just laying there i was like I, I was praying i was having all kinds of like talks talks with uh with god about He's like, well, see, you see what happens? You see what happens, Brian? I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I know. God was telling you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know, I know. I shouldn't have pushed it so hard. I get it. Could have done all the work, you know, maybe skip the whiskey the night before. I get it. I won't have any whiskey today. I promise. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> Except today. Now you're surrounded with whiskey again, I notice. So. Well, I, I, Sunday morning at the show, um, this guy, Pristine Scales, that I've been talking with about whiskey on Instagram back and forth for the last few months, comes over, like before the show, like when we're about to start, when we were supposed to podcast, you know, right. at 10 a.m., he comes over with like four bottles of whiskey and a few glasses. He's like, I, I wanted I to have some pours for you. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, all right let's and i did it and it was good it was actually ended up being a real good way to start sunday um but here's That's the cool. here's Hold the kick one. oh oh he's running away he's running away he, he's like this podcast ain't working cusco you've already been talking way right. past your quota <laughs> so so here's the kicker dude i i get back remember that test i took on thursday yeah that one comes back positive the test you took on Thursday. No, you took one on Thursday. It was negative. Right. No, I took one on Friday morning. So I took, took one on, on Thursday Friday. and then went and worked out, did the whiskey thing with the guys and then woke up the next morning and then realized I'm not going to get the results from that test that I took yesterday. So I went and took a second one that was yes. negative. You know, the test I took on Friday was negative. Oh, I see. What you're saying. The test, I, the test I took on Thursday, I didn't get the results until Monday, you know, after the show. Um, and it was positive. Positive. I told you you had COVID. <laughs> i was like yeah that's you remember i was like you're like i did this i did that i was like that sounds like covid bro <laughs> pretty mm. sure you're covid you're like i got a negative test well yeah so hashtag super sprinter congratulations good job brian yeah i didn't really want to say that out loud but uh you know i'm supposed to be telling the truth here <laughs> <laughs> well i mean wait, i don't know what what you do like you got a negative test you went to the show you felt fine it yeah. was only because you're when you're talking about you saw me, that wasn't during the show. That was before the show started. Right. right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you did all that stuff. Yeah, I was prepared to have bad. I, luckily, I mean, Duran was there. Matt was there, both ready to back me up. My parents were there. I had four people, four quite capable people who could hold down the booth for me in yeah. the, the event. And, and everybody told me, and I thought, like, you just need to stay in the room. We'll hold down the booth. Like if it, if it comes to that, and I was like, great. That took, took such a weight off my shoulders. I was like, I'm just going to go back to the room and just like sweat and like not take medication and just like ride it and just see what happens. And then sure enough, Saturday morning, I'm like, whew, hey, I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's like one, one night of misery. Yeah. Yeah, I got it back around Thanksgiving. It was down for like two weeks, but you knew that. But yeah, that, so you're feeling better on Saturday. And then Saturday, of course, is the, the huge day 
which I, I put my money where my mouth was this time. I always say that if I'm going to go to a reptile show, one of these big, you know, three day shows, not counting like local shows or whatever, but any, anything that like us arc is participating, having an auction in like NARBCs or super shows, those kinds of shows. Um, I always say that I want to go for Friday setup and then I'll go to the auction and that's where I want to be. So um, that's the part that's for me. And then Saturday, I walked around and just said hi to people, you know, because that's, I, I don't vend those shows. I wasn't selling anything or anything like that. So for me, I just like to be like, Hey, normally you see me on the other side of the computer screen, but here I am now. So, and it was great because I did see a lot of uh, friends and people that I recognize like from the channel, you know, like frequent commenters and stuff, but there was a lot of people who were just kind of like over the corner, like, Hey bro. Yeah. I watch all your stuff. Good job keep it up. And I have no clue who they were. And yeah. we've talked about this before, but I'm like, Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, what's up? I'm Garrett. And they're like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, and you are, <laughs> you and know, that, like, I know that happens all the time. That's there's plenty of those from, for me on, on the weekend as well. Um, I, it, what it is, I think a lot of people that like, if you watch it on, watch it on the screen for a bit, it's kind of like a little, a little weird to be like, well, there they are a person. And it's a little weird for some people. Yeah, I think so. Well, and you know, I think I actually credit those people because there's, there's the opposite type. Like we were talking about some mom that wrote a, like a hate letter to snake discovery, because no matter how many hours they stood there with a giant line saying hello to children, her kid was like at the end of that line and did, they didn't get to say hello. You know what I mean? And they the mom was so mad at snake discovery that they didn't say hello to the little girl. So you don't want to be that person. You know what I'm saying? So these people are kind of like, Hey, I know that guy and that's cool. And I'd like to tell them good job to throw a little bit of, you know, positivity their way. But I don't, I realize also they're probably here and doing stuff and I don't want to interrupt them and take their time. So I appreciate that. I, I think it's, you know, I think it's cool, but I is actually there to meet people. So I'm down. Like I had one in such conversation in the urinal there at the, <laughs> at the fairgrounds where the guy's like, it was up. I know who you are. I'm like, well, this is a pretty weird place to have, be having this conversation right now. Or like <laughs> in the urinals next to each other, you know, staring at the wall as you do in the urinal, you know, there's two directions you're allowed to look straight forward or down. Right. And then I don't anything know, else I heard JT, JT leaning over at the urinal one time at the Texas show, like really trying to see what I had going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> see, and here you are remembering how inappropriate it was. So good job, JT. Oh um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was good times. I had that moment with Charles Barkley one time, the old urinal. I didn't try to look look around the divider. I just made <laughs> trying to check out stand, standing next to him at the urinal, like, hey, I know who you are. <laughs> I know who you are. <laughs> Charles Barkley being next to me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh we, well, we all traveling saw a bunch of like sports celebrities on the way home. So in LAX, uh trying to go through security in front of me and Thomas was a small pack of uh LA Kings players. They were getting held up at security, so that was kind of cool. And then, and I was like, "Hey, look, those are famous people, you know." And they were talking about the games and stuff, like in a way that we knew that they were players too, not just somebody, you know, that's like whatever marketing for the team or something like that. So they were players. And Thomas is into hockey, so I thought, and I was like, "Check it out, a bunch of LA Kings players." And he's like, "Yeah, but they're like LA Kings, so who cares?" <laughs> I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Thomas looks like he would be into hockey. He is. Yeah. He's yeah, well, like he's kind of came by it naturally. His parents are Canadian and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So he has yeah. to be in a hockey. He looks pretty, he looks like he could be a Polsky too. Looks yeah. Pretty, yeah. He does. It looks pretty Gretzky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, yeah. And then Rob sat next to someone and he's like, I was checking out. He had a Super Bowl ring on the whole time and stuff like that. So all kinds of sports folks. Dude, dude I had fans. brought, I had brought you so much stuff, dude. I had what brought, was it? Yeah, I I had brought this um this bottle right here of Eagle Rare with mm -hmm. the Half single a bottle of Eagle Rare. Single bottle. It's three, it's three quarters of a bottle. <laughs> it was, <laughs> but I was gonna have you. So no, I brought I had brought this. I had brought this Maker's Mark FEA FAE02 
for you to try. And I was going to have you like try it against the Eagle because believe it or not, there are really good whiskeys out there besides Eagle Rare. You know, it sounds weird. Oh, I, I believe it. I've just yet to find, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. So I Eagle thought this Rare might for be me it. is like that nice and small quantities, but also super drinkable. Totally. Like, you know, it's special when you drink a little bit, but then I could sit there and drink it all night too. So totally. So I thought this might be one to, this might be your Eagle killer right here. So I brought this Ooh. bottle, my own. And then I also brought an extra bottle in case you liked it more. So you could take a whole full unopened bottle home. And I was going to just give you the option. I was going to get, you know, let's take the rest of this store pick or, or take the, the other one. And I, I had brought you like a bunch of corners for pro line racks and like all this stuff. Oh yes. I need, <laughs> Oh, I want those. <laughs> so much stuff. So uh, well, that's all right. You know what? You made it home. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was my Saturday night. Yeah. So we did the, do the long Saturday at the show, had the auction, which was really fun. We actually skipped out early. I have a, a lot of people, anytime I go to a show, they're like, hey, let's do dinner tonight. Let's do dinner tonight, you know? Skipped out and early I, from the auction? From the show to get to the auction. Oh, gotcha. Because I always tell everybody, I am going to the U.S. Arc auction. Right. I'm kind of here to support the community. And the U.S. Auction, US Arc auction is obviously a big part of that. So like uh at the one of the previous shows i went to all the retic guys were like, let's go to dinner and i was like when are you going and they told me it was like during the u.s arc auction i was like what the heck you guys are retic breeders you know what i mean you need to be supporting u.s arc and i said no that's cool i'll skip out but just give me your money that you want to spend at the auction and i'll win some stuff for you and they're like ha 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 and then they walk yeah. away i was almost ready we to saw do that in case i didn't because i wasn't sure like i was like i made it to the show I don't know if I'm going to like, you know, like because of how Friday night went, if I'm going to crumble at some point and need to just go back to the room. Yeah. So I was, I was prepared to be like, here's money I don't have necessarily because I didn't sell it. I hardly sold snakes until the last like half hour of the show. But somebody told me you were bidding in faith that you were like, oh, I'm going to spend the money today that I hope to make tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I, I 100% bid in faith at the US Arc auction. I would have bid higher you if my How's faith that was faith stronger. strategy go for you? It worked. <laughs> but it, it definitely worked very well. Um, yeah, it, it, it absolutely so Sunday did. was a good vending day for you? Sunday was a good vending day for me, right at the end. That's cool. Um, yeah, well, some of the, the highlights for me at the show. Oh, I, let me just finish the dinner story. So, you know, here's this group of people. And I said, I will go to dinner with you, but you must then go to the auction. So let's all leave the show at like four o'clock. You know what I mean? We'll get together and we'll go meet somewhere for dinner early. And then we can hang, have dinner, have a good time, and then go to the show. Be there right there at the beginning. And you know what I mean? Uh, so, so we did do that. We had sushi with, uh, MJ, uh, Andrew Lewis, the cold blooded cafe gang, um, Andrew Lyons, Lewis, uh, Andrew Acevedo. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. He's calling himself Lewis online now. I don't know what to call him, but okay. you know, that guy. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and then, you know, I had, uh, Thomas and, oh, and Eric Lee and his wife. And so it was, yeah, it was cool. Had some really good sushi. Rob and Thomas had never had like real sushi before or like good sushi. This was a pretty good sushi joint. So I think they, they're like, Rob is like a, you know, chicken nuggets and mac and cheese kind of guy. You know what I mean? So he ate sushi and to his credit, he's like, I'll try anything because I've been feeding him good stuff since he worked here. I'm like, try this vegan thing that my wife made or try. Yeah, this. He, yeah. he tried some, I went with him and uh, Stuart out to, um, I just call him Stuart Blake, Blake Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him and Blake and his and Blake's brother and uh, Rob and Duran uh, okay. Friday, fr Friday for lunch. Yeah. We went, we we're just like, Oh, let's just leave the show. I, like, I can come back, set up when got and Rob ordered a vegetarian burrito because that's what Blake ordered. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to try what you do and we'll see what happens. Yeah. He's getting, well, you know what? It started because, he was like, nah, I don't need any of that weird stuff. And I just kind of shamed him into it a little bit, but I, <laughs> I gave him some, I ordered him some Thai food and was like, I spent this on you. And I ordered what I thought you would like. And I got you this Thai food. And he's like, that's too Thai food. That's way too crazy for me. And then he ate it. And he was like, 
did he tell you the story? You talked about that specifically. Yeah. He's like, this has changed my life. And then for like six months, him and his went to, wife went to Thai food every Friday night. <laughs> so I said, you remember the Thai food? I'm going to do it again. We're going to do sushi now and it's going to be great. And I like, you know, I kind of know what he likes, you know what I'm saying? So I just ordered a whole bunch of stuff, all that I like, I think I ordered like 12 rolls that I thought he would like. And we just all kind of you know, took what we wanted almost family style or whatever off of it. So everyone got a big sampling. It was great. So anyway, that was fun. Um, but some of my highlights from the, uh, the show obviously was like meeting a bunch of people. That was really cool. Um, and I, I, I think probably everyone that watches is like, what cool animals did you see? And there were so many cool animals there. But at the same time, I, I get excited about the people with the animals and like kind of like their life journey. I want to go along with that, you know. So do you remember our YouTube episode, Bull Snakes Don't Bite with Summer from yeah. TSK? Yeah. So Summer is, oh man. Dan and Colette Sutherland's daughter. Correct. Uh, and I called Colette Tracy this weekend. That was annoying. <laughs> I said, hey, Tracy. And then it was just a brain fart. She's like, I'm Colette. Tracy's the one from Texas. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I, you go. I know that. Oh. And it's so annoying. I don't know why I called you Tracy, but now I'm like super embarrassed. Anyways, there's, no, there's nothing like, because I mean, Colette is a, a legend, an absolute legend in the reptile industry. And now I'm to the point where she knows who I am. So I'm like, woo woo. And then I call her someone else. It's like, yeah. oh. It's Somebody like, else oh. is calling her, calling her Claudette a couple times. I was like, Colette, Colette. Like on a, Claudette. On, yeah. On video. What on a video. So I was like, oh, I was really? Like, yeah. I was like, you can. It's, oh, it's, it's just Colette. It was so but at least it wasn't Tracy. I know who she is. <laughs> I know who she is. But I, I was thinking, like, I don't know why I called her Tracy, like the Barkers. You know what I mean? I, but. I don't know why I did that. I, I get it, know. dude. I feel your shame, dude. I could feel it coming right out of your pores. It's all good. <laughs> it was bad. So I'm sorry, Colette. But I don't know. Maybe this is like family business or whatever, but I'll just spill the beans. But uh, Summer's pregnant with their first kid. So oh, that's great. Yeah. First oh, grand dude, are we really doing this again? I feel like we've, we've Super done this. Super personal. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if that's a secret or not, but they shouldn't have told me if it was. Wow. So I was super <laughs> stoked about that because I'm like, babies, yay. And you know, she wasn't them, she wasn't there though, right? No, she no. wasn't there. Uh, but some of her snakes were. She had a bunch of like baby bull snakes, and I had so much fun checking out her bull snake collection. I just like anybody that's like into a specific niche, you know, like she didn't have to get into bull snakes, pine snakes, all that stuff. She could have done something that was like, oh, these make money or this is a business decision, but she didn't. She chose what she loved. So, you know, that's kind of like with me with the super dwarves or the house snakes or whatever. So I like that. Um, so anyway, and then I love the fact that she's making uh, making those guys grandparents and everything like that. So that was pretty cool. So to celebrate, I bought a snake from her but it's funny, I, I wanted, when we were there, you okay? You're like listening for somebody in the background here. Yeah, no I, think, I think it's, no, I think it's just your uh, table over there making noise. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, just make sure, <laughs> just make sure it's not my dog trying to break through a wall because nobody else is here. <laughs> it probably <laughs> is. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I, I'm just I'm excited. That's that's their first grandkid. That's her first child, obviously. So that was exciting. But when we were there, one of my favorite snakes that she was showing us were these locality Christmas mountain uh, animals. And I was like, wow, these are super beautiful. And then she told me about how she accidentally hatched an albino from pure locality. So it's like a new, it's that's me on the table again. It's like a new new pure locality albino line. And it, that's just a ridiculous story to me. So she had some pos heads at the table, but I called her and was like, yay, babies, but I need a visual. She's like, I have one female. I guess you can have it. So I was like, I don't want to pay value right now. So <laughs> I bought one. It's not here yet, but I'm excited about that. So nice. one awesome. more stupid pet to go with my African rock python for no reason. <laughs> Maybe I'll breed them together, the Afro and the... Christmas mountain bull snake <laughs> will be great. <laughs> awesome. But yeah. Anyway. So, so why didn't we nothing record? else exciting happened? 
That yeah, right. Uh-huh. Why are we watching? Why are, why are we doing this over a freaking Zoom call when we were just in person two days ago? <laughs> well, you were sick the first night. Yeah, that was my fault. And then the second night was, uh, we haven't determined fault yet, but, <laughs> but on my way back from the auction, fortunately, I had like already dropped off the, the guys at the, uh, the Airbnb, but I knew I had a lot of driving to do the next day. So I went, I just went out to fill up the gas tank. And then I was like three blocks or something like that from my Airbnb. And you remember those crazy winds? Well, you probably don't. You were sick. But Friday, there was like insane winds. I, I, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I do know that um, I, I do know that I wasn't seeing any winds, even though like on my route, like when I plugged in my route to GPS to go, it was warning me that the route was uh, pro- possibly compromised due to high winds. And I was like, okay, I didn't see any or feel any, but if you say no, so. No, I yeah, we saw that too. And we're like, what's this all about? Later that night, we went out, we walked out from like the the restaurant at the Sheraton there, and we were going out through the parking lot, and there was like huge trees down on cars. So like across three, four cars, big trees from the hotel fell in onto these cars and all this kind of stuff. So that was pretty gnarly. Um, and we we're like, what is going on? But apparently there was these high winds had whipped through and stuff like that. And so entire city blocks were like completely without electricity. So I was driving back on this, this little road and there was no power, no, at the intersections there were not even like blinking emergency, you know, like if the power goes out, a lot of times they kind of by default turn into four-way stops or whatever, right. no power on those, no street lights, couldn't see anything, it's totally dark. So I'm just do, 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 driving back to my Airbnb and I went through an intersection and I didn't even know that it was an intersection until I looked out my driver's side window and there's huge white shape coming towards me. And I had that like slow motion moment where I was like, oh crap, that's a car. So I'd gone through an intersection, didn't even know it. They were doing the same thing from a 90 degree angle to me and they're barreling straight at my driver's side door. And I had enough time, like in my mind, like I said, to get do that slow motion to, th- to be like, these guys are going to come straight full speed into my driver's side door. And so I, I knew that I couldn't swerve or hit the brakes or anything. I didn't have any time for that because they were just coming at me. So I put the pedal down and accelerated just a little bit. And they m- took most of the, the impact to the, the driver's side rear door you know, and, uh, it was still enough that I couldn't open my door. It was like crushed shut, but it spun us around, broke the axle. I think the car was, I mean, it was a fairly new car, but might be totaled. I don't know. It's it's probably right at that point where it costs tons of money, but maybe because it's a year old car, a thousand dollars underneath the total limit. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, the thing was thrashed. Yeah. So they, they create, you just, creamed into me i'm in a little sedan they were in a jeep uh grand cherokee and just full probably 45 miles an hour or something just went right into the side of me and so i spun out did like a 360 and then the car jumped the curb and landed and crashed into a telephone pole so that was fun um and i was kind of like whoa you know and I, i was thinking i could feel my uh my you know, my spine do like that whole, you know, so I knew I was like, Oh, I'm going to be sore tomorrow, but I want to make sure everybody's okay. I had to climb out through the passenger door because the whole side of the car was crushed. I have a picture of it. I'll put it up on the camera here. So you guys can see it. Um, and, uh, do, 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 let's see here. Let's see if I have one that would probably kind of show up on on there for for those of you guys watching this thing on on youtube i don't you can't really see it here but that wheel is like not in line like the the rear axle just snapped in half i was dragging on the road so it was that was pretty good but that was the the bulk of it so that's the rear passenger looks kind of backwards on the camera there but at any rate um or i mean rear driver said so uh i climbed out there's three guys there, young kids, you know, maybe 20 years old or something like that. And, you know, they were like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, are you guys okay? And they're like, I think we're fine. So they were like, oh, good. That's the important thing. 
and then it, it started to go down from there. I, I, I won't do like the, the whole crazy story or whatever, but one of the guys that was a passenger started getting like super fidgety. So I don't know, like, you know, my adrenaline levels started coming down, like my knees are shaking and you know what I mean? Everyone's kind of feeling it at that point. But I was, I was talking with them. We're, we're joking. I was like, wow, your guys car, like, that's a good car. Look what that did to mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you guys picked a good one with that, all the stuff we're exchanging license registration. Shouldn't be any issue. The cops show up basically right away. As soon as the cops show up, the guy in the rear passenger side starts getting super fidgety and he looks at me and he goes, bro, are you okay? And I was like, how, what, you know, like, you don't look good. And I was like, how so? And he's like, your eyes are dilated and I, you're kind of swagger in there. Like, are you intoxicated? And the cops, he's like, I think you should sit down. And the cop goes, Hey, what are you doing? And he's like, no, just, I'm just saying like, clearly he's intoxicated. And then he goes to his buddies and he's like, and be honest, like he was speeding, right? Don't you think he was going kind of fast? And he just starts throwing all these excuses out there to, to try to make the accident look a certain way. And the cop was like, I think I'm going to have to have you go sit down. He starts freaking out. His friends are like, dude, go sit down. And he's like, well, I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to call my dad. So the cop says to me, like, you know, go back ahead over the other side of the intersection and sit over there. You know what I mean? So that we don't have some kind of an issue or whatever. <clears throat> and like two seconds later, dude's dad shows up, looks the same age as the guy. You know what I mean? Just a total bro. And uh, just starts F-bombing the cop and calling him all this stuff. And he just, I thought he was going to start swinging at the cop. Cop pulls out his taser. Guy's like, dude, look, he's got his taser, whatever. Oh, man, this is going to be somebody. He's like, well, you got a body cam on. Somebody get this. This is going to be police brutality. And he's just egging the cop on. And, and I'm just thinking, like, all the lights in the city are out. The tow truck driver came, and he, he goes, he saw the car, and he's like, were you driving this car? I go, yeah. He goes, are you okay? I was like, I think I'm totally fine. And he's like, that's good. Last one wasn't like that. And I said, last one. And he goes, I just got back from this intersection. Oh, wow. And this is the third time today. And the last accident was a whole lot worse than this one. So it just, whatever this intersection was, I mean, I'm sure they were having problems all over the city. But this particular intersection, just the way that it was set up, I just don't think you can see it as you're driving. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, so they had like three accidents already. So if anything, it's it's going to be like a non-fault accident. There's no exchange, you know, exchange insurance, driver's license, you're done. But yeah, so they, yeah, they all just started freaking out. It was like this, this whole thing. We were waiting for the cops to start getting fights and brawls with this. And the, the, the poor driver and his other buddy are like handling it like champs. I mean, if you're I, they're somewhere from 18 to say 21, right? You're that old and you get in a big car accident like that. That's a scary situation. You know what I mean? And they're, they're just being totally sweet, making sure everybody's okay. It's just this one passenger that's escalating everything. And then I, I'm going to call my dad, you know what I mean? And so dad's like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my lawyer. And it's just like, oh my gosh, California, settle down. Hey, Jeez hey, Louise. hey, hey. <laughs> sorry well, i moved out of california We're uh, yeah, i don't now, claim so. those people <laughs> <laughs> mm, man but anyway i you know it's it's just like everybody's okay everything is fine even if it's someone's fault we're just gonna pay for it it's a car accident it's fine you know what i mean you pay for so. it more and dearly and faster you start escalating it with a cop that's just there to help to do yeah same. yeah exactly there's no call there's no reason for it you know what i mean so i don't know it's pretty clear that there's a lot of witnesses pretty clear what happened it's fine everyone's asking if i got the insurance i always get i think you put it this way one time i think it was you and i used it ever since where they're like do you want any extra protection and i'm like yeah what's the one where i only bring you back the steering wheel yeah that's exactly how i put it yep <laughs> i thought that was you <laughs> 
yeah, what's the one where you only bring back the steering wheel and we're yeah. all good? And they're like, D- oh, okay. yeah, DW used to be LDW. Now it's just DW, the, d- the damage waiver. The damage waiver. Yeah. Yeah. So I had that. So, and the car company was great. Um, That's why you know. I get it. You never know what's going to happen. And in that case, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Literally, you can come back with the steering wheel like, sorry. And they'll be like, all right, well, you know, here's another one. <laughs> right, right. And so, you know, like I, I've got business insurance, I've got my own auto insurance, all that kind of stuff. So like, if it was something where we ended up having to pay for their car, then that's still got to get all sorted or whatever. Right. But, but at least with the rental car company, they're like, no worries, we'll bring you another one. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, they just swapped the car out and I was on my way. But, and the next day I I was sore. I mean, you know, I have like a bad back. So I had, you know, my back was sore. My neck was a little sore, but, but I was like, "Ah, this is weird. I have like a weird pain in my chest on the left side, like in, in my ribs and then like under my shoulder blade. Yeah. I thought that was really strange. What is that? And as soon as I got in the next car and I put the seatbelt on to buckle it, the, that is exactly where the buckle goes yeah, over the you seat strap the right driver. does right here yeah yeah and so i think what happened was i believe i probably tore or stretched some you know soft tissue tendon ligament yeah cartilage, that's a whatever, spot. yeah right with that, that strap connects goes to you. my yeah because it's at the top and bottom of my shoulder blade where it was at and it's yeah. like you know oh, i've been so. having uh i've been having sympathy pains for you since it happened actually like, <laughs> well you were in that lot- other accident the year before yeah, that's that's true. Same same thing. Strap right. Same. Actually, I got hit in the same exact spot. Uh, really? Yeah. Driver's side, rear axle. Um, for split split the rear axle, where I couldn't drive off. Um, and yeah, literally the exact same spot is where I got hit. That's crazy. Um, yeah, almost. You identified. were you were pretty wrecked. Um. I, yeah, and it wasn't until the next day. Like the next day, you know, that day I was I was fine. I got home. It was the next morning after the accident. I got got up and I was like, I was like, oh no. <laughs> I don't think I'm good. Yeah, I was I was messed up. Um, yeah. I got T-bone. I got, you know hit pretty hard too. I was coming around a, a corner, and uh, the guy was fishtailing around the corner, coming at me like crossing over to my lane. I tried to get out of the way, oh, out to the right, and he just came in, you know, ninetyed me right at the at the back. But that one yeah. was big time his fault. That was no intersection stuff. That was just an idiot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was yeah. But how was the show? Regardless. I feel like the show was the slowest Pomona I've seen um, since like, cause they had been building, they had been building I'd, every yeah, I'd be... had been bigger than the last one. Like Saturday at the last Pomona before COVID the last show was like by at like noon, one o'clock on Massive. Saturday, it was like sh- literally shoulder to shoulder. Like, like don't try to hit upstream fish because it's, you're going to, you're not going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Rami said, then he did the Anaheim show during covid and he yeah. said that was the biggest show he's ever done yeah that was huge now the spot i did hear a lot of people saying because it, there was a lot of space so i think everyone's thinking it like it wasn't that crowded but i'll tell you there were a ton of vendors there there yeah. might be more reptiles there than i've ever seen yeah no it was, um, it was a huge big show i just mean it was because the, of the covid restriction it was because they had to check everybody at the door that was slowing things a lot down as far as, because usually they open doors, it's like this big rush of people coming in. I think was, probably people were worried about, you know, especially if they travel, because like I got three people coming from California and there's restrictions to get into California and restrictions to get into the show. And I'm thinking, what if they don't let us in or something for some reason? You know what I mean? You come all this way, you spend all this money, and you can't even do the reptile show. Right. So there might've been some preemptive people not attending. But I also right. think that like, I mean, the, the building they had it in that building, number four, uh, Rami said was double the, the footprint of what he normally runs. Mm. So they were, I mean, it was a massive, like you can go watch that YouTube video. We did it. I was just like, we, what we did was like, we're going to walk up and down every aisle real quick in a video and we'll chop it up together. So people get a, a an idea for what the show is going to be like. And I was like, holy smokes, this is taking a long time. <laughs> Even with nobody there, right. it was just like, this place is freaking huge. Yeah, it was so massive, no doubt. I, I think the feeling of it was very similar to Schaumburg last year. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? As I missed that as, one. Yeah, so as far as like how crowded it was. and But honestly, I don't know. That made it pretty nice. Okay, so my phone calls are driving me crazy. I'm just throwing phones away now. 
I can't get GI Joe here soon enough. It's just, oh. um, I've been gone for a week. So like my whole voice mailbox is full. So everyone's like, I'm just going to call him eight times in a row until he picks up. And it's like, I'm on an airplane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or whatever. I, I didn't do it. I had a legitimate reason to call you, but I, I just called once. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's just, well, most of them are unrecognized numbers. So they're like new customers reaching out. So, I mean, that's great. That's what you want any business, but I'll tell you what, for me right now, like we moved to this building, we're getting all this stuff together. G what I reference, what I was referencing is GI Joe uh, that a lot of people who watch my channel will know who he is if they've been watching for a while. He's in the army and he's stationed in Korea right now. He's finishing up and he'll be back here in late spring, early summer. And then he's going to go full-time sales guy at Reach Out Reptiles, which is, to be honest with you, a very new and scary experience for me because so far, all of my, like, I mean, when I started the business, obviously I have to do all of it right? I was filming and editing my own videos. I was building my own social media platforms. I was taking care of all the snakes. I was handling all the customers. I was doing all the shipping and fulfillment. I had to do all the taxes. So it was crazy. But I identify as a sales guy, I think, you know, so to hire someone else to take care of the snakes really wasn't that big a deal for me. I could see that that would be something for someone else because you're like, whoa, those are my babies. You better do this just right. But I trust Rob with the care of the snakes. And there's a little bit of a learning curve, but we work together on that stuff. And he has their best interest at heart. So I'm not worried about it. The videos. I think Thomas does a better job than me in a lot of ways on the videos. Certainly production quality, like easily blows me away. Um, we're working on the marketing side and stuff like that. And so like we get that down, it'll be good. Aiden is handling, I mean, all of my employees are great. Kim is probably better than me at customer service. Everybody loves Kim. Um, but I've never handed off sales. And for me, Reach Out Reptiles is uh, more than a business, like a lifestyle. I'm trying to design and develop my own lifestyle here. And I never wanted to get rich, famous, any of that kind of crap. I want to spend more time with my kids because they're young. And so I need the business to be able to run itself on the day-to-day -day operations so that I can just act as a business you know, owner up more remotely, come in, do the things I need to do when I need to do them and have that type of a schedule rather than being the first guy here and the last guy here every morning, every night. So even the, a lot of people that are calling me today are saying, oh, I thought you'd have the day off today. I'm like, well, then why are you calling me? <laughs> I just, no, I just thought you'd be taking the day off. So I figured I'd interrupt it with a request for a snake. That you don't have in stock right now because it's not breeding season. So, you know. Oh, but, man. Yeah. But that's a big deal for me. So he comes back. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to be like, oh, here's my phone. Have fun with that. There's 300 missed calls, you know. So it'll be, it'll be, and I, he's stoked. I, I think he's very excited to, to do that. He's already handles a lot of the emails, got good, good reviews on him from the customers. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, really good. So I'm stoked. What's your next big, uh, big move over there? Where do you next think you're going to be in five years? Cause you still kind of dabble in everything. Five years, dude too far out to figure or what uh, that's that's a long time bro well i five mean you years? know like lots of stuff can happen but like where where would you like to be in five years i guess you know let's see <laughs> <laughs> i mean let's do you see yourself see doing what you're doing now just a little bit different scenario yeah you know i'd be i'd be okay with that i'd be okay with that because yeah maybe having one other person on Maybe, maybe, maybe having one other person on that I really know, like, and trust. Um, if I can afford that person. Uh, the, the first hire is hard because yeah. they have to they have to be you. You're trying to clone yourself. Right. Everyone else after that is like, I just need you to do this one thing all the time. Right. Um, and, and that's, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about, do I want to like make the snakes more you know, take it out of hobby status, basically, because it's certainly hobby status right now. I mean, I've got 
a bunch of, I'm looking around the room. I got scrub Python, you know, like one card with Python and Indigo Python, Indigo, I almost said it again, Indigo snake, a hogno snake, a couple of corn snakes, uh, you know, the blue beauty, you know, the one like, if I wanted to go like and turn it straight business, um, I've thought about it. I've put more thought into it than I have before. Before I thought, no, I don't want to do that because I've already done that with other things in my life. Um, whether it was music, whether it was, um, what was the other one? I had another one I, that I really liked doing and I turned it into, oh, photography. Um, and I, I just still am not certain if I, if I want to, I kind of like where it's at at the moment. Um, well, you're doing it as a business. You're just not doing one thing. You do a little breeding, you do a little bit of educational shows, you do a little bit of, you know, the YouTube stuff, you, you know, all of that right now is feeding into what your business is. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, That's what I mean by like dabbling. You, I think you're making money on each of those. Different yeah. Aspects. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I am. Um, I, <clears throat> I want to, I just want to see where it goes. This, uh, this new thing with, with faith has brought a lot of new people into my life that are, are really good. And they're people that I've wanted to bring into my life for a long time. Um, these, these types of folks that are on this level um, of independence and yet, and, and need, and, and they balance that with themselves and with all the other people that they interact with. Um, so this is very new. You know, it's, um, I'm, this is this is a new network I've never really delved into before that I had told Hillary I wanted to find something like this um, for years, for the years we've been here. And just the past few months, I'm like kind of getting in into it. So that's that I think is going to play a big role into what happens in the future going forward, because I'm, I'm just starting to, like I said, just starting to dabble in in here and um, make these connections with these different folks. And one of them have. Um, something they're starting like i said that last that last thursday when we we're having whiskey over there that was like the initial um bi-monthly meeting that we were going to do and we we're start doing things like like meeting about fatherhood and also business the, the mm -hmm. one guy has a, a thing that he's been involved with that he's going to incorporate into our meeting it's called heaven and business and it's basically taking um you know those ideals and in, incorporating them into business which is something i think you probably do a lot and just yeah. and making that um a big part of your business model you know the christ-like business model i guess and um that's something i'd, I'd want to have more understanding of, of and like feel more comfortable working in that space before i push forward with it to make sure that i'm doing the right thing not just for business but just just the right thing period sure. um so Sounds that's like kind of, a pretty cool group yeah it, it really is um and i so that's that's where I'm at right now. I'm I'm wanting that to go forward. I'm I'm happy where I'm at. I don't want to take too much more time away from the the kids while they're not young. Like to your point about want to spend time with the family. Like I really appreciate the amount of time that I'm able to give to the family right now. I don't really want that to change much at all um, over the next five years. I'd want that to stay pretty much status quo. Um, so, and I think that can happen, but I, I would like it to grow at the same time and it is it is i mean some of the pairings that i've got happening and some of the animals i'm gonna produce this year are definitely going to be uh next level i think i might actually get out of the single family or single car family uh zone this year not that it's been bad but it it would be helpful especially with all the different Getting sports things now. yeah all this all the different busy you know covid is is slowly slowly waning away and uh well i mean you, you wouldn't think so depending on where you're at but uh yeah what like sports things kind of you know Noah having baseball the kids having different soccer teams there's different different extra yeah. tracks or activities happening in different areas one car might not cut it for that anymore. no that that's pretty great because you know your kids are right around the ages of mine or, or span i think we have a little bit of a no your youngest is younger than my youngest but my older my you know, so yours is just behind mine right anyway it's very interesting to see that like my second daughter riley she's very much getting into theater and stuff like that. a whole new thing like it's not just a bunch of uh diaper changing and you know what i mean daddy daughter dates anymore now they want to go out and do other things and they have a, their own life but it's still completely dependent on you because right. you know 
they're little goobers you know what i'm saying they're like hey i always tell her didn't you get a job yet when you drive a car she's like i'm a kid dad like stop telling me that you know i would <laughs> and i i actually told her i was like we need to start going on a go-kart place because all the young kids these days that i know are like oh wait till i'm 25 to get my license and <laughs> my kids are always like can we do this and i was like yeah you got a car you know <laughs> like hey can i buy this sure did you bring your money you know, like my thing is like, don't say no, just let, you know, nature limit them. Like, you, <laughs> you go on limit yourself and you can do what you want in life. Totally. And yeah. So like, you know, I want to get them actually like, so my, my oldest daughter is 11 and uh, the, the second one is nine. And I know that seems pretty young, but if you look at people that like drive professionally and stuff, they started five years earlier than that. So I'd love to get them into some kind of little powered vehicle. Like I said, we'll just go get a membership to the go-kart place and go on family nights or something like that. So they can learn the gas and the brakes and turning the car. Now, Finley, my four-year-old can drive a stick. <laughs> he's just like a freaking motorhead. You know what I mean? He's just, it's all day long. He would watch like car videos and stuff on, on YouTube and, I always say that Garrison and Finley, my two boys should get like a, a little racing team together. Cause Garrett Garrison is like little Mr. Engineer loves to make things. His favorite videos to watch are either like um, people like forging things, working with their hands, but like making Damascus steel from scratch or uh, restoring old things or this take something apart, sandblast it, paint it, put it all back together. Like classic Tonka trucks and stuff like that or engine rebuilding videos where they do like a time lapse of an engine rebuild. Haggerty has a YouTube channel that you would you would think that'd be the most boring video in the world, but they do such a great job with it that uh, he does that stuff. And for Christmas, we bought him a Lego Technics, which is like the advanced, you know, Lego thing uh, of an F-150 Raptor. And this little Lego thing was so freaking cool because the first thing you build is like the engine and it actually has a an engine block with pistons that move up and down because oh, they're wow. connected yeah to a camshaft that goes back and then there's a gear on the back of that that spins a drive shaft that goes to the rear wheels and then it's got a real like steering column that goes down that turns the front end the suspension have springs in it so not only are you building because he's built like you know spaceships like he's got the mandalorian set for legos and stuff but that's not functional it'll have a little door that opens but you're building a toy with this lego technic set you're building a model and it says 17 up and he i remember at one point he got through he'd built like three quarters of it and then he found out he did something wrong early on and he had to tear it all the way back and rebuild it so he tore it all the way back. I was very depressed for, with it for like five days, didn't touch it or anything. Then he got back into it and it was so cool. And I'd help him when he wanted it, but really he built the whole thing on his own. And mostly when I was helping him, I was like opening a bag and setting the parts out and he was building it just to be there with him. But um, he was so proud of this car when he was done. It was cool. And I was just like, I was I want to buy like a 1940s riding mower and just say, fix it, kid, figure it out. You know what I mean? And then cut my grass and I'll pay you. You know what I mean? Like right. I try to fat. find ways to encourage them to do what they like, but they need to have a racing team. So Garrison can build race cars and then Finley can put them through walls. Racing you know? mowers. Racing <laughs> mowers. There yeah, you go. It's a thing. <laughs> Yeah, they're fun. Oh. It's just they, as the kids get older, it's, they're so fun. So yeah, speaking of family and and making it back to them and all that, um, you know, I mean, I don't know how Ashley's feeling about about you and your deal, but like, when are we gonna do one of these in person again? <laughs> yeah, we need to do it. Um, I know you and Duran have been talking about coming out here. Yeah. For a while. Yeah, we talked about doing Arlington, which yes. would be cool. But problem is, I I booked some other stuff around it, so I can't I can't actually make that. Oh, you can't. No. Okay. Okay. I talked to Earl about it because uh, you said he was gonna, you know, help us out and stuff like that with that. But no, I I won't be able to make Arlington. So you guys are just gonna have to come out here, I guess. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad I haven't booked my ticket yet, then. 
<laughs> is that all I, is that the only reason why you're going to go? I mean, I'm not, I'm not well, going to say I mean, it's the it's only reason. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be, it wasn't going to be the only reason for it for sure. But um, I mean, cause I haven't been, I don't think I, I didn't make it to the September one. I don't think no. Cause Pomona was happening the week before. Right. Or, or uh, Anaheim. So no, I was, I was really thinking about going there and I was thinking that would make sense for the podcast, but if you're not going to make it out, you're right. Drawn and, and I have been talking about coming out there. It has been a bit overdue. And now you're talking about the family. I haven't seen them in a while either. Um, so I may be swaying that way. Should. Yeah. yeah. You totally should. Yeah. I'll see if I can get some uh, local good old boys to do us a, lo- a nice location sponsor. We'll have it out here in Pittsburgh. That'd be fun. Blake, Blake Stewart might be able to pull it off. All have right. them come out, shout them out, sponsor it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Making I, promises this week for or this month for next month. Stuart, I did sponsor I did, Stuart Design. <laughs> I did forget to shout out uh Whiskey Wimps <clears throat> and Matt Bernard and actually sponsored this bottle of uh Booker's. But Ooh. I also ha- I also haven't opened it yet, so maybe I'll have to bring it with or something. I don't know. <laughs> Save it. Save it for the next one. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he uh I mean, we kind of ended up trading. He gave me something. I gave him something at the auction, but uh, one of my, I, I, I gave a budget to my staff. I said, go spend some money. You yeah, know? I watched that. Right. So uh, Thomas won a tricolor hognose snake. And we were like, I don't know what to do with this. How are you going to, and I was going to have someone else ship it to me. And they're like, how do I take care of these? And Matt stepped up and he's like, oh, hognose, you know, you do this, you do that. And I was like, wait, 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 here, Matt, this is for you, <laughs> you know, and then later he bought that bottle of whiskey that you and him were bidding on, and he gave that to me. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so. Yeah, he donated, <laughs> so he he donated that bottle, too. <laughs> I know, he donated it, won it back for, like, 500 bucks, 600 bucks? Yeah, I think and then it was gave it 500, yeah, 500. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's always fun when someone donates something, wins it, and a couple people, I think it was, um, that's how I did with this. I, I was, uh, I mean, cause this was just a sm- you small, you donated that. No, well, this was a small part and I didn't donate it, but I, oh. I, uh, I won it. Oh, I, I was, won it I was then... bidding against Jimmy Yeah, and, and, uh, there was, it was, it was, this was a small part of it. It was uh, like one of those turtles that holds a wine bottle and it came with a wine bottle and the turtle like drinking the wine bottle on its back, you know? Gotcha. But, and I, so I beat, I beat Jimmy out. I, I did a thing when I, what I usually do if I'm bidding somebody and it's a friend, and yeah. I like, I don't know, I stand up and move closer to him. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> and then so when I won, I just like took the thing. I was like, here, dude, I just wanted the toilet. And he's like, I just wanted this. I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I was doing that with Desiree from Cold Blood. Yeah, yeah. Beforehand. I saw you, the, the, the Tushy, the, the Tushy yeah. uh, toaster. That's right. I, I told the. Uh... I told her, I was like, I'm going to outbid you on everything tonight. She's like, why would you do that to me? <laughs> She's like, you're freaking balling over there. I was like, no, no, I just want this one thing more than you. And it's to outbid you on everything tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is Jesse was doing that. So, you know, Jesse and, uh, and Shelly and Jordan were all there, the, the Freedom Breeder family. Yes. Um, and Jordan was bidding on stuff and Shelly was giving him the go ahead. Like, you know, you go ahead. Bid, if you want to get that Star Wars thing, you can just keep bidding on it and, they were letting him bid, but then Jesse, like at some point, moved to the back of the room and was doing the uh, the one thing or what, what? What is Phil's name for Manuel? Or <laughs> when he, when oh, he really? Jose, <laughs> you know, Jose, his own. Uh, Jose, Jose, Jesse's back there bidding against uh, Shelly. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> bidding against his own wife and kid. Yeah, that was so. So Jordan won the the Lego uh, Yoda, Yoda, which yeah. I was gonna get for my kid. But he was like standing up on his chair and he's like, don't you miss my bed? You know what I mean? Because him standing on the chair is as tall as a normal person. And, and Desiree's like, I'm a bit on that. And, and I didn't bid at all. And she's like, why don't you do it on that one? I was like, I ain't going to. He really wanted it. You know what I mean? My kids are fine. <laughs> he just built a Lego F-150. He's good for a while. So, yeah, that was fun. Now, man, boy, I love those auctions. Those are good times. Yeah, auctions are the best, dude. That's like that's probably the best part of the show. I think so. So one of the things that we're doing that you'll definitely have to come out for, and we talked about it last year, but we didn't do it, is this Retic Fest thing. I'm going to open an invitation to come out in person to the new facility, anybody on our Patreon. And I kind of wanted like everybody to be able to experience it. But I mean, you could join the Patreon for like five bucks a month and it makes it logistically way easier, right? Oh, for dude, us. speaking of people complaining about Patreon, sorry, I, I had a comment this morning, like a couple of comments this morning on it. I'm doing a giveaway and, yeah. uh, and 
I just get nothing but like I'm trying to do something good. Like you, all you have to do is buy something that's good for you, and you get it. It's like you know I'm not getting any money from it. It's just this thing that Hillary works with, works through. It's like a company she works through. Yeah, it's like the it's like the, the supplements. And yeah, stuff, so right? yeah, you get like the little thing, and you just so you, I'm trying to like encourage people to do something good for yourself. You know, get some good supplements, put them in your body, and hey. Right. If you do that, I'll give away, I'll let you have a chance to be in the giveaway to pick one of the first hatches out of my first clutch of the year, you know, yeah. which is a pretty sweet clutch because it's a hypo to hypo. So everything's at least hypo with yeah. a bunch of other genes that are mixed in um, in the pairing. And so, and then, you know, first comment on the thing, because I'm last chance, I think the answer is like today. And I made a video about it last night. And so first, like first comment, I'm like, Oh, you just, and I say something in there because I was trying to figure out how do you, because I said, you'll get first or second pick. I was like, well, second pick, first pick, because I kind of want a first pick and then you can get the second pick. But I was like, so I decided, okay, anybody on Patreon get first pick if they win. Anybody that's not a Patreon that wins still get second pick. So you like something like that. Okay. And this guy comments like, oh, you just, yeah, well, you just give this, give this just another scam to get money. Give this asshole some money. Not, not really a content, not really a giveaway. You got to, I was like, no, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say you, you you can still win and not even be on the Patreon and you still get to win, you know, potentially a, at the low end, like a few hundred dollars snake. Yeah. And if you do want to, you know, join the Patreon for three bucks, I'm not making money by giving away a $300 <laughs> snake. If you put $3. No, I think, in, I think people, I just think they're on, they don't understand. That's but, what I said. Yeah. I was like, I was like, listen, you don't understand, but I'm not going to explain it to you because it came off as jerk. Right off the bat, <laughs> calling me an asshole. <laughs> yeah. How dare you give your Patreon community exclusive perks? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I haven't had any grief with it, but at the same time, I'm having a party on my dollar at my place. I can kind of invite who I want, but I do want the information to get out because we're going to have different people and speakers and stuff like that. So we actually have, I'm hiring like a production crew. Here's the most in. important question about this event when it's going to be one of the last two weeks in july okay so working around the major reptile shows so um i have to nail it down i really need to do it like right now because everyone's like when is it gonna be but i have a few key people because i want speakers and stuff like that we're gonna have a bunch of like super dope breeders and stuff all here so that you're not just hearing garrett harp on things i want to bring the community together you know what i mean and, and our Patreon supporters, I mean, this is way, the way it should be. You shouldn't be paying, even if you're paying the three bucks to get entered to win a free hypo, you know, morph, morph, morph ball python. Uh, that shouldn't be why you join a Patreon, in, in my opinion. Right. That was one of the I, things I was going to explain to I'm this guy when I just, I just cut myself off. I was like, I'm not talking to you, dude. You don't call me right. an asshole. I'm not, you're not worth Um so Is like when you, I joined people... your Patreon, you didn't even have it yet. I just told you yeah. you needed to do it. And I started, I started uh, like uh, PayPal you gave me, you, you gave 50 me bucks money. a month <laughs> yeah. until you set it up. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted to support what you were doing. And then when it became like, so I was your first and highest supporter for a long time. And then once it gained traction and you had higher supporters and my name was like dropping down your list, I was like, oh, you dirty dog. So I pulled my support from you. And I started as a Patreon supporter, the first and highest of Hillary's channel to the same amount. So <laughs> that's why you do it, you know, and I don't think I've, to be honest, like, I mean, I love Hillary, but I don't think I've signed on and looked at any perks or anything for it. I'm still paying her, you know what I mean? I have been for, I don't know how long now, but between you and her, it's been a few years, but you're just doing it to support the person. And you can jump into like the inner sanctum of their community at any point. And be like, hey, I'm I'm your supporter on Patreon. And so for three dollars a month, you can have these. Otherwise, sometimes some people in the industry are kind of unattainable. You know what I mean? You can't approach unapproachable. And you could be like, hey, I pay you three dollars a month, and they'll stop and say thank you. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. It's but it's it's not like it makes huge money. Like I put probably put a lot more into my Patreon than I get from it. But I appreciate the people who appreciate me. That's what it's all about. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know, probably some, you know, big giant person or whatever might have a, like a larger Patreon. But the way I see Patreon too, it's to kind of help people get to where I want to see them be. So if someone's sort of like already arrived. I don't personally feel like, 
you know, as compelled to, to support them on Patreon. But if someone's like, oh man, we're reaching for this goal and it's just out of reach. I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I can help you get there this much more, you know? And that's what's for me rewarding about being a patron of others on Patreon. So, yeah. That's I know you're on a lot of people's Patreon too. Why do you do it? Um, mostly if I, if I like what they're doing, um, you know, I mean, and I'm like, hey, you, you're cool. I like what you're doing and I want to support that. <laughs> right. And that's how most of it is. Like I did a giveaway for our, our patrons and we gave away you know, quite a snake, but it was kind of like a little raffle thing or whatever. And there were some people that bought, I mean, I think they were like $500 tickets. And there are some people that bought like, no, they're $50 tickets. And some people had bought like 10 or, or whatever. So they're dropping 500 bucks on a raffle thing. And then they didn't win. Yeah. You know, and the person that did win only, I think the only person one or two tickets and they were like, woohoo. But everyone yeah. was really excited to see that person win. I gotta so, say, dude, I gotta say there's a lot of support. Even, even like patron support is fantastic and awesome. And I highly appreciate it. But like i get a lot of support from the community in general regardless of any of that that's so, what we're talking about the guy watch me pee yeah, i watch you all the time <laughs> pee or when you're online <laughs> it's great you know he didn't stop he didn't want an autograph he didn't want anything from me he just wanted to say thanks for what you have already given me you know yeah there, there were quite a few people who after the show were like hey man i just want to Cause like I was obviously haggard for a bit, you know, I was like kind of not myself, it was just very low energy and um, people after, after the show reaching out to me saying, Hey man, I just want to make sure like you're all good because you definitely seemed a little, I was like, Oh, I appreciate it. Like, I really appreciate it. I'm good. I'm good. I was just, you know, going through it, but we'll see how much they love you after you release this. And they all know that you now gave them COVID. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's how those things really work, man. Just, show up on the negative tests and your vaccination card and it means you're safe. Not. Well, that was a silly thing. You know, like I I'm all for like, you know, trying to keep everybody safe, but some of the regulations don't make sense either. Like if you have a vaccination card, you can come in, even if you have full blown COVID, that doesn't make any sense. How no. does that help anybody? You know? Yeah. I mean? So yeah. Science. I, I don't know. I think I think it's great that they're like Rami was telling me how much over and above he's doing to try to have a safe show, how much money he spent. So it's not like the state comes in and pays for that stuff. No, no, no. Rami has to do it. Right. <clears throat> and oh, Rami does a great job. I, I don't know how that guy. Huge does. show, tons of promotion. Everyone's saying kind of a low crowd. And he put a ton of money into feeling everyone safe just to get people a reptile show again. And I'm yeah. sure he's going to receive a lot of hate for that as well. But, you know, it's like, we're doing our best. And how do we keep moving the community forward, even though, yeah, you know, the, I uh, mean, it was only look, I mean, he had to adhere world. to the Los Angeles County thing, you know, he, otherwise you get the show shut down. Like he, he had to yeah, put the limits right. in place that were required by the County. Otherwise the show wouldn't happen period. So, right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how that guy, the guy clearly has a, ability to handle high amounts of stress and and deal with it well because like i mean otherwise he wouldn't be able to pull this off i don't think he's, he's definitely catching catching it from all sides um well you know, i think people think it's just about the money but rami owns businesses and he makes the money he doesn't have tell shows to to coordinate something like yeah, a no super yeah show. right this it's isn't his crazy. end all be all this is that is a he... labor of love and yeah, i'm absolutely. sure he lost money this weekend but I think that he's able to do it because he does love it so much. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, that's probably most of us in the industry, you, me, we can go work for someone else and make just as much money. And I'd have twice as much time for my family. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but then. And, and probably, Rami's always been a huge, like from the moment I met him too, he's always just been like, how, like, how can I help you? And I can only imagine he does that with everybody that he, that he knows in the industry. So. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he wouldn't even let me pay. I, I brought three guys to the show and he gave us like vendor passes and stuff. And I was asking him that video we released before the show. I said, I want, I said, I was nervous about how to get here and what was going on with the COVID thing and how's that all going to work. And I kind of want to let people know what to expect. 
so they see it before the show and and see what the show is going to be like before they get here so you can see this is the process of getting in and this is all the stuff that's going on inside so you can decide for yourself whether it'd be worth it or not to do and and he's like that's a great idea let me get you guys some passes i'm like i'll pay for it i mean we came out you know i'm going to the show i should i'm not trying to get in for free or something i want to support you and what you're doing he would not hear it would not allow it so just a great guy but yeah he really but is. that's the thought is like without rami in the reptile show reptile shows in the reptile industry reptile shows would still happen but he makes it a way better place you know so how do how do we keep it's it's so hard you know because people like try to price shop things but when you are price shopping on people who are in their business as a labor of love you know and all you care about is the lowest price you know what i'm saying like hey did you know that i can get in the show for free if i have my butt like call my buddy at the right time and he'll come open a side door for me when the security guards are on their break or whatever why why do you do that you know rami's like pulling his hair out well he doesn't have any hair but you know what i mean it's like doing everything that he can to get this this show going and you're like i'm gonna try to jip that guy out of 50 bucks you know what i mean and still get in on the early access why you know i don't know why do that you know what i'm saying like someone goes above and beyond and gives you a better product and does that stuff than you paying the price for a high quality like animal from you or me or whoever um that's just breaking even that's i'm providing you a good product you know if you want to look at it that way and you're paying for said product just like you would with anyone else if you want to so if we if we're going to support each other in the industry you got to find ways to go above and beyond. It could be emotional. You can, I, I was, we were talking on the phone today with Lori Torini. She's like, I always tell everybody that, you know, if they're worried about their animals, like emotional and, and mental health, that they need to buy them from you because of all the extra effort you take, you know, and she's great about that stuff, you know? So she's supporting us in that way. Other people are, you know, I, I don't know. I love the support of people in the industry and i love finding ways to support people like calling summer and outing the fact that her parents are now grandparents on our podcast <laughs> and then making her sell me a snake she didn't want to sell her but then paying her top dollar for it right away and saying congratulations and now i'm going to have that snake forever and always think about them and talk about them when i have it and Everyone will say, why do you have this bull snake? And I'm like, ah, I don't know, Summer. Because bull snakes don't bite. That's why, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. That's just fun for me. It's, a, it's another tie to another person in the industry. So that's what I really enjoy about it. And that's why it was a highlight for me at the show. There were so many cool people, so many cool animals. You can watch any of the videos that any of, of us YouTubers have put up if you want to see all that stuff. But yeah, I, I really miss the camaraderie, you know, with this whole pandemic and everything going on. So, and like you said, you haven't seen my kids. And I, I, one of the first questions I ask you, are you bringing Hillary and the kids? You know what I mean? Are they coming to the show today? You're like, no. Even if they weren't going to the show, I was like, I'll go to their parents' house in Long Beach and go see them if they're close, you know? Yeah, it'll, but, it'll happen again. Yeah. yeah Speaking of Retic Fest, that. you're doing Retic Fest. I think, uh, I think we're going to do Carpet Fest here again. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. Here's, yours was uh, one of my favorite ones that I've been to. So the last one I went to. Well, that was, that was the last bit. time it happened. <laughs> well, didn't you do one that like, like you semi hosted it down in the parking lot or that ended up getting canceled? Nope. Nope. Yeah, it didn't happen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Time to do it again. It's a lot. It's a lot to do that, but I always have so much fun at them. And then I'm always so exhausted from having carried the burden of, of putting something that to, that's why I'm talking about how much I appreciate Rami. Cause that show is way beyond anything I could pull off. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and he does it with a smile on his face and he still won't even let me pay for a ticket, you know? So yeah, it's great. Just because I think he sees that we're there to help him. And I'm sure you'll have people listen to this and be like, what the heck? I don't get free tickets. And it's like, that's the, already the wrong attitude. I'm going to call my dad. you like, what's he doing? Just, you know what I mean? Just let it rest. Good stuff happens. Bad stuff happens. Let's support each other and, and make the world a little bit better place. 
You know what I mean? We don't all have to call our dads all the time. We don't have to get in a fight with the cops. It's fine. <laughs> but since then, all of my employees, every time I do something stupid, they're like, are you okay, man? I think you should sit down. Are you intoxicated? I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm never going to live this one down. <laughs> too many rental car problems in too short a period of time. Oh, man. Yeah, they tried to call me right before. That, that's the part I didn't say. That they called me the rental car company that I rented from mm. forever now. I'm a gold member. Um, called me the day before and said, blah, blah, blah. I don't think we can give you an SUV because I haven't had a credit card for a while either. I've just been, I've gone to strip down to bare minimum. No credit cards, one car. I'm just like, you know, going back to high school. Um, <laughs> and they're like, oh, you can't, we can't rent an SUV with a, uh, we're just making sure you're using a credit card tomorrow for SUV. I was like, huh? What are you talking about? I've been, I've been renting SUVs from you guys like every other week with a debit card. Like, what do you, yeah. what? And they're like, oh, I was, I was like, literally two weeks ago, I went to Freedom Breeder, do SUV to pick up this ProLine rack and yeah. with debit card. I was like, what do you, what do you mean? I'm, I am leaving for a show tomorrow. I need an SUV. <laughs> I'm barely going <laughs> to fit it in that. And uh, yeah, anyway, long story short, I got the SUV, but yeah. <laughs> That was a far more, uh, we should have ended it right after you said, you know, whatever you said, like 15 or a minute and a half ago, we should have just ended it right there. Are you intoxicated? You should sit down. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. <laughs> end of the show. <laughs> Brian, Brian, I think you should sit down. Are you okay, bro? <laughs> and cut. <laughs> See y'all next month. I meant the part. I meant the part about like, why won't we just help each other, support each other, and you know? Oh yeah, that would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, but listen, we, we need some. We we'll, we'll just ask our community for help. We need some drink sponsors, and we need some location sponsors. Maybe we can team effort this one and get Cusco out to see the Hartle family for the next month. That would be great. It'd be a lot of fun. You can come out here, play in the snow a little bit, go home, remember why you live in California <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and, and have a good time. Maybe we'll have Stuart design do it. I'll hit him up and maybe he'll do half and everyone else can pitch in or something like that. And we'll, and we'll do that kind of stuff. So just not, not because anyone needs to, we're doing this stuff anyway, but if you yeah. enjoy the content and you want to help the high school version of Brian Cusco doesn't even have a credit card or a second car anymore. Here's how you can help. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, I love you, everybody. I love you, Brian. Love you too, bro. We'll I, know you you got a, I know you got a live stream real soon. I got a live stream in. Yeah, it's okay. Thomas is going to do it. So. All right, good, good. No pressure. <laughs> All right, dude. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Searchable as reptile.